Dane County is being recognized as the first in the nation on record with a plan to deal with the emerald ash borer. Now many local communities are following suit, and News 3's Angela Bennis is here with more on what they are doing. Angela? Well, Andy and Eric, what's interesting is after Dutch elm disease decimated our trees back in the late 60s and 70s, ash trees were planted to replace them. And until now, forestry experts say they have been the perfect tree. They're tolerant of our plowing, our salt, and our mowing. But now ash trees are under attack from the emerald ash borer, forcing communities to make these action plans. Up and down streets in McFarland, emerald green ribbons adorn ash trees as a reminder of the silent tree killer headed our way. The professionals are fully convinced that it will get here. And it's not if, it's a matter of when. And the emerald ash borer is closing in, as close as Waukesha County at this point. It's usually a two to three year process once the emerald ash borer infects the tree. And the tree uh, starts to die from the top down. McFarland has 550 ash trees on village property, another four to 5,000 estimated on private properties. So, like Dane County, they're not wasting any time finalizing their own EAB plan. Uh, certainly we want the public to know if they have an ash tree, um, and then we want to educate them what to be looking for. Part of that plan calls for taking out the ash trees over time, similar to what Madison has been doing. They build a community. Uh, parks and trees and all those things make people want to live in McFarland. And, and we want to certainly preserve them as long as we can. Forestry guidelines now recommend that communities like McFarland not plant the exact same type of species of tree on both sides of the road on streets all the way down, like you see on this one. Because if a problem like this arises and emerald ash borer is found in, even in one of these trees, all of the ash trees have to come down. They realize that. Um, EAB is just the next issue that we're dealing with. There's going to be another issue that's going to be affecting trees after that. And it's only a matter of time before there's another one that's going to be affecting another species. So the key has been to limit the amount of one species that you're planting in an area. Now, besides educating the public and doing some selective cutting and replanting, one of the other things that McFarland and other communities are putting into those action plans are deciding which ash trees need to be saved, what to do with all of the wood from the trees once they're cut down, and, of course, how to fund it all. That's what these action plans contain, a lot of information. Quite the pest. Yes, it is. All right, Angela Bettis, thank you very much. Thanks, Angela.